Kai, you had a question. I do. So I have many questions, but the most important question you okay. have right now is, um, so growing like kind of as I'm getting older and noticing getting more into working life and working more and having different jobs and whatnot and trying to find out like what path to go down, you know, to make money and, you know, think about having, you know, family one day and, you know, just traditional like things that, you know, a yeah. growing person has to think about. I find it increasingly difficult to actually focus on cultivating, you know, spiritual, my spiritual life and, you know, focusing on God in the midst of, you know, having to surround yourself with, you know, people who yeah. don't have any of the same ambitions. So, so you kind of raised a, a few different really important points um, that need to be discussed. One of them has to do with the, the, bigger, the bigger picture. You know, in, in the Vedic system, they had what was called the Vanashram, Vanashram Dharma or the Vanashram system, where you had people were basically categorized in terms of their affinity for work. You know, they were seen to be in one particular group. It's not these groups were rigid. They, they changed according to the way people might change also. But in their personal life, it was promoted that, a, that an ideal situation is that when a person is younger, that they're really focused on a, a learning experience and they became what were called brahmacharis. They observed brahmacharya, which is a, um, uh, actually literally means celibacy, but it means a, a, a lifestyle that's really focusing on developing two things. One is spiritual understanding and perspective on life, and then cultivating a personal practice. This personal practice that's actually transformative begins to change you and, and reinforces, you know, your, your spiritual, what was formerly just an understanding. Now you see things with a great deal more clarity. And what that does is it becomes the foundation for your life going forward. So you had the brahmachari, then you had grihasta. Grihasta means one who basically owns a house but in it was interesting because there's two terms in Sanskrit one is grihastra the other one is grihamedi and grihamedi is someone that would marry for the purpose of um, making a so-called home in this world which we know is is a dangerous thing to do because you are going to be ripped from it at some point if not before, at the time of death. So the idea of trying to make a permanent home for yourself is not, not smart. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't um, organize yourself and try to, you know what I mean, l live in, in a way where you're not too disturbed by things around you and, you know, you're leading a healthy and happy kind of life. Um, the Grihasta, this was seen as an ashrama. This word ashram, you know, is generally thought of in relation to um, like a, a place where there's spiritual teaching and spiritual life going on and people go and live there. But it was applied more broadly to actually people's sections of their life and so when one was a grihasta while it was considered they owned a home they did not see it as their home they did not see it all about me i'm now going to settle down and it's all about me trying to create my perfect little kingdom with my perfect little wife or husband and my perfect little kids and we're all going to live happily ever after because we know that ain't going to happen <laughs> So it's really, what is this all about? And what it was about was to live that period of your life in such a way that you actually spiritually advance. It is meant to be for your liberation. 
Whereas when, when things were looked at, the idea of settling in a house and having a family and everything, for the general populace, it was seen as something that just pulls people further into the material concept of life, which leads to more unhappiness, more imperfection, more difficulty. So the idea of getting married and having a house and everything from a spiritual perspective was seen as being something that you do at an appropriate time and under appropriate circumstances to further your spiritual development. And so the husband and wife, for instance, partners in life, they worked as a team. They did not aspire to make each other the center of our life, nor did we expect to find perfect happiness with each other. That's, that's insane. I mean, we put so much pressure on each other by expecting perfection in our husband and wife. And then we get so terribly disappointed when we find out they're not perfect. <laughs> you know, the fact that you're disappointed shows a lack of intelligence. You should expect to be disappointed. You should expect that your partner in life is not going to perfectly fulfill you because they cannot. Does that mean you cannot live happily and affectionately and in a very deeply caring way? No, that should be the product of an actual spiritual experience and a spiritual vision. So, you know, it's because I know you a little bit and stuff, I know that you've gone through a sort of like a little bit of a period of education in your life, developing an understanding and trying to develop a little bit of a spiritual practice. But perhaps you're not at a state yet where you're kind of like rock solid there, right? <laughs> and so depending on, you know, different influences and stuff, you might get pulled into certain directions. So it's actually important in the beginning of a person's spiritual life to seek out friendships with people that share a common ideal and more especially to find some people that are more spiritually developed and spend some time with them on somewhat of a regular basis. And what that does is it, it, it creates an anchor for you. It's a reminder. It keeps you focused until you come to that platform of, of um, stability where you are having that influence on other people. So that when you're out in the world mixing with people, uh, people that you're working with, business associates, you don't have to get lost in their world, nor do you have to completely withdraw from them and act like a total weirdo or a creep or you know, a strange dude or whatever. There is, there is somewhere where you can live your life and continue what you're doing and cultivate friendships, but not get lost in that world and be a force of good, be an influence on others. So rather than being overcome by their influence and where they're pulling you and what they're demanding. And that takes a little experience and time to learn how to navigate through these types of relationships and how to navigate your way through the world and, and, and do these types of things. So there's no easy answer here for you that there's like just one simple solution. No, if you could find a way to live somewhere near um, people that have a similar focus in their life and people that can be a good influence upon you. And at the same time, learn to navigate your way through, you know, learning. I mean, you have an obligation, and it states it in the Bhagavad Gita, a person cannot live without working. That's not, not a reality. That for us to be, um, to have a positive contribution on society, means you know we, we have to be responsible and that responsibility is founded in, in spiritual understanding so learning to grow into that type of a life and to you know get things squared away like that is basically what you're struggling with so um, I know part of it comes from 
when you have work associates or a boss or whatever that's just you know wants to go out drinking or you know wants to pass a doobie and expect you to get loaded and everything and you know you've you've got to learn to be able to say you know I'm sorry you know respectfully uh, don't have any problem with you doing what you're doing but I'm trying to sort of like have a little bit of shift and direction in my life so if you could be you know kind enough not to um expect me to participate i really appreciate that you know you'd be helping me out and i would consider you a friend you know you, you can talk to people in a nice way and by talking to someone like that you're going to get two kinds of reaction there are some people that are going to get angry because it's like like they think that you're passing some judgment on their life so you got to make sure you got to tell them you know i'm not making any judgment i've I've got something that I really want to try and do with my life and I'm trying to alter that you know maybe a, a year ago a couple of years ago no problem but I'm I'm trying to seek to move into a different kind of a space and so I really ask your help you know not to expect me to to um join you in those kind of things and most people will be fine with it in fact you will find that on anybody that's kind of like intelligent and and sensitive a little bit they go like whoa what's what's this person into because everybody inherently feels that discomfort and disease with things you know this word disease came from disease uneasiness feeling you know it's true people get loaded and they get into all these different kind of things and do crazy and wild stuff because they're trying to fill up an emptiness and you know you can do that and you're not going to interfere with what anybody else wants to do in their life that's their business but you've got a direction that you'd like to try and head in and just ask people to give you a little bit of space to do that you'd be deeply appreciative most people will think that's fine a few jerks will get angry and think that you're judging them and get all pissed off or whatever. And you shouldn't judge people. You should never I mean if you ever feel that you're better than anyone else, you're heading away from the spiritual goal. In the spiritual goal, I mean it doesn't matter how degraded a person may be, how into you know really inappropriate and weird stuff or whatever they are. there's never any grounds to feel that i'm somehow superior we are not we are never superior all living beings are are completely equal in all circumstances and from the point of view of a person that's genuinely cultivating or seeking a spiritual experience they will tend towards feeling actually lower than others and so it's easy to speak in a mood of some humility at least most people will respond to that and let you free so you know there's a, there's a lot of learning to do you need to continue to grow in both your understanding and your personal spiritual experience you know from the meditation and stuff i see you got your japa beads there you still doing your japa meditation and things and that's that's great these are the things that are really going to they are transformative but you've got to find your way to how to navigate and in doing that you will grow so much as an individual okay awesome. thank you very much you you're very well at us you got another one or what oh, we're going to we're going to we're going to these gonna guys shoot some shift off, off to yeah. the other guys thank you okay dudes I, who's next oh, okay. yeah um, he's going for it <laughs> I have a question about um spiritual happiness versus mm-hmm. material pleasure or whatever mm-hmm. and um uh I used to do silent meditation and um I remember like having this feeling of like and with this now even more so like this is the happiest you know that I've ever felt and yet here i am just with my eyes closed or just chanting this mantra yeah. um but with the silent meditation eventually like it 
um, that feeling um, wasn't coming like every time with it and um, I just now I, I feel like that was you know God allowing me to you know seek more Some more yeah, yeah to look a bit yeah, deeper yeah um, but I still have heard that with with the chanting sometimes people will f you know feel like it slows down for them and um, I remember like the time period where I wasn't feeling that and just like my mind's kind of like questioning like oh well y you know like was that um, really very different you know because it's not still here or whatever like it was in a way kind of temporary like as far as ha feeling it at this moment and you know not feeling it then um, so I was wondering how um, you know if if that feeling comes again in the future of doubts or whatever how you can deal with it and kind of remember you know which way you want to move and what it is that it is keeping you moving forward and not falling into the trap yeah. of Maya <laughs> the, this happiness that one experiences in the beginning of the, the spiritual experience is of course always very um, wonderful and in many ways unlike anything else that we you know like any material happiness when we think about you know crazy stuff or you know going for it with something whatever you know where there's this there's this huge build up to a type of climax and then a, you know you go down the other side so-called material happiness is, is always like that. Whereas the spiritual experience, the awakening of the happiness, it is different in that um, you don't kind of like reach any peak and the experience becomes one where there is you know, have you, have you ever seen a movie of a tidal wave? I'm not talking about the fantasy ones. But, you know, a lot of tidal waves are not really that big. And they don't necessarily have a huge, you know, face on them, you know, like people surf and stuff like that. It's just this, it's, the ocean is kind of bigger. It's taller than other parts. And it's just moving and it's relentless. You know, like uh, the big... Um, tidal wave that hit Thailand you know, some years back and so many people died and it affected Asia a lot and you see it you know what I mean it comes in and it comes in and it showed it in Japan too and they had a big one there and then it just keeps going and it just keeps going and it's not like a ferocious rush but it, it, it is powerful and almost relentless and just keeps going in some ways, I, I would use that as an experience, or as a, a way to sort of like draw a little bit of a parallel with the spiritual experience, where the, the happiness that you find um, in the beginning, there's going to be a combination. One is the distress associated with material life. Material life is distressful, or not? I mean, you, you really want things to work out, you know, you want to look a certain way, you want to have certain kind of relationships, certain kind of experiences. And then there's always the doubts, you know, am I, do I look good enough? Am I cool enough? You know, <laughs> and all these, kind of, all these kind of things. And then, you know, you meet someone, whether it's just another person as a friend or, uh, you know, a, a, a person that could potentially be a partner in life or whatever. And you come away and you have all these doubts. Did they help and wonder what they thought? You know, was it okay? Was it not okay? Am I going to be accepted? Am I going to be rejected? You know, and then the same kind of thing happens with, you know, you go out with a bunch of friends or whatever. And 
gonna party you know it's like just like the new year's eve you know and everybody's going crazy and they're counting down five four three two then everybody just <laughs> say hey nothing's happening <laughs> time is still passing and for much of the world you know the people of this world this is not even their new year it's just another day what's it so special why but we invest so much into it with a desire for this wild crazy cool outcome and we want so hard to make it happen but it's 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 a pretense and the so-called exhilaration and rush that you get is actually not fulfilling at all and it passes and it leaves you back in the same place or worse off in the spiritual experience it's kind of like you will find that spiritual happiness is is more steady and it tends to grow in in increments and it may happen that after a certain amount of time a person has forgotten where they came from and in the beginning of somebody's spiritual growth in their life sometimes people get to this point and then they start looking back over their shoulder and thinking actually some of that stuff I used to do was really cool and you've forgotten about the downside of you know what it used to be like when you're filled with self-doubt and wondering and you know questioning and all this kind of stuff and so you get you get drawn back to it and then it suddenly hits you I, this is just this wasn't that much fun and it's not necessary to do that but we often lose sight of the contrast of where we've kind of come from and what we're experiencing now in silent type meditation it is a condition of more what I call neutrality of, of peacefulness and just being relieved of a lot of the anxiety and stress and difficulty and, and just that relief of all that stuff is a very positive and, and, and happy experience but it tends to be like that in, in slightly it grows and grows and grows but it's more of that same type of experience and a more neutral a neutrality where you're not being overwhelmed with a form of transcendental blissfulness but you're very peaceful and very happy in this in this condition that type of experience is often tied to the spiritual uh, or the attempt to have the spiritual realization of myself as being a, simply a spiritual being learning about my spiritual position when I or, or my essence rather my essence as being a, being a spiritual being when I have more experience spiritual experience and my practices are more focused on the awakening of a deeper understanding of my position in relation to things and then my natural function as a spiritual being what is my natural function when these things begin to uh, when you have experiences more associated with them these are way more profoundly wonderful and the, the blissfulness of tied, tied to them is, is just indescribable but this is not what drives the true seeker if our quest is for that happiness and I'm always wanting to experience that happiness and why I'm doing it is because of what I'm getting out of it and everything it is very that is it has a limitation it has a limitation the big problem is it's still all about me it's it's very self-focused what am I getting out of it what my experience and everything and, and I am totally at the center of things whereas the big shift comes in spiritual life when one turns their gaze towards that Lord within our own heart 
contemporaries to the yogis described as Paramatma and the cultivation of a spiritual relationship with that eternal friend, that spiritual personality who is beyond everything, who is the most perfect and beautiful and wonderful. And the cultivation of that relationship where I'm not focused on myself, but I'm focused on wanting to, to be pleasing to this, my, my most wonderful and most profound of friends. Everything, we're talking about a, a radical shift in, in how we're seeing things and who we're living for. It's not just all about me anymore. It's about someone else. It's about something else. So, um, while, while that, that desire to taste happiness and, and really appreciating that experience may be important in the beginning, and may be motivating for us if we become overly focused on just what I'm getting out of it and the happiness I desire then we are going to miss out because this is where our focus is and if our focus is here I cannot be focused on this point here and be focused on another point over here at the same time it's just not possible right so if I'm focused on it's all about me and what I'm what's happening, then I'm definitely not focused on this Lord Paramatma, the, the Lord within my own heart. And because of that I will not be able to um, experience increasing levels of self realization and God realization and experience the um, wonderful result of Okay. Yeah. Pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah spiritual <laughs> life is is a is an amazingly wonderful thing. I mean, I had no idea when I was younger. You know, I was probably a lot younger than you guys. You know, I was just like just searching so hard, looking for something, and I've ran into a lot of fakes, I ran into a lot of people heading in the wrong direction, but I thought were really cool at the time. But over time, you know, I was able to meet uh, genuine spiritual teachers, great saint, and the effect that he had on my life was just amazing. And as a result, my life has been, been amazing. My spiritual masters have had a tremendous impact. And um, it's, this spiritual experience is way beyond anything I could, have, I could have imagined. And I am still only at the threshold of the journey. It, it gets even more far out. I mean, it's described in all of the yogic texts as, as a science. You know, when people talk about science or a scientific method, they're talking about a method that has been laid down with specific actions or steps that are taken which produce a very specific result. And at different stages, you may have a certain result, and when more is added to it, you get it now a different result, and you know, a, a, it, it, a growing process. The spiritual process is also very much like that because what you will be experiencing, what happens to you, your growth spiritually, is all set down in, in codes. You know, when I say codes, I mean like codes of of conduct and activity and results that, that occur. And everybody goes through the same thing. It's not like everybody has their own experience which is uniquely different than others. Uh, there are features of it that are different, but there are many features of it that are exactly the, the same for everybody. It's, it's a tried and tested path that if one follows this path, the outcome is guaranteed. 
following the path doesn't just mean going through the actions. It's a, um, the trans. It's an internal revolution, a change of heart and a change of consciousness that will go, that will come about as a result of of um, going through specific spiritual practices. Okay. Okay. Anything else? We're yeah. open. All right. My question is: Growing up in a materially and financially successful family, mm -hmm. they're very submerged in this is how life works. You make money. You have your business. You have your home. You have your family. And when I'm when I'm submerged with them and around them, and doing my part to make money and live in society like we have to, can't be idle. I feel very empty inside and prone to depression just because I know all this materialistic success and endeavors are only temporary happiness that go away. So when I find, when I'm with Krishna and I'm surrounded by spiritually conscious groups, I feel very fulfilled in my life. And my question is my family, a lot of members are very invested in me and really, not intentionally, but they put me down and saying, this is a phase, you're gonna have to come back to real life and this isn't how you can live your life. So how do I cultivate and uphold a harmonious relationship with them yeah. without feeling that they're trying to spiritually limit me, you know? Yeah. This is always a bit of a challenge and it's never the same for everyone in that you're dealing with people and different people have different consciousness and different ways of seeing things and everything. So if they, if they were to understand, for instance, that um, you were trying to build your compass in life. The actual issue is not the activity. It is not the work. It is not the attempt to develop economically, to make money. That's not the issue. The issue is if I think that in and of itself is going to fulfill me, that this is the purpose of life. If I was to understand and appreciate that my purpose in life is tied to my being, a spiritual being in this human body, and that I should be seeking my spiritual liberation at very least, you know, to become free from the entanglement of material life, which is means it always ends in, in some form of suffering or other. If I could understand that by engaging in this work, but redirecting, my purpose has changed. My purpose is to find a way to dovetail and connect what I am doing with, with Krishna, with God, with the Supreme Soul. This is exactly what happened with Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is a, a conversation between Krishna and this great warrior, Prince Arjuna, who was asked to be taken down into the middle of the battlefield before the battle starts to go down the line and look at who they were to fight and to be struck then with this idea that these are all intimate relatives and friends and on both sides. And this is going to be a complete disaster. It is going to be such misfortune for everyone. All this killing that was about to take place, even though the motivation for engaging in the battle was good. And being just overwhelmed by this, he suddenly decided that he wasn't going to fight. And so in the conversation that takes place in the Bhagavad Gita, 
Krishna speaks to Arjuna about instead of operating on the regular material platform, this conception of life and where you're going to find happiness, why not seek something higher? And seeking something higher means to act for a higher and spiritual purpose. Not that the activity is going to change. He's still a warrior. He's still going to fight a battle and he's still going to administer a kingdom afterwards. It's who you're doing it for. If you are doing this for um, as a way in which one can serve the Supreme Lord and all others to act responsibly and to seek to be pleasing by making an offering of my life in this way, not only is there not a problem, it's something you need to be doing because it is a positive spiritual act. When you take the spiritual living being, the understanding of that and the understanding of any higher being, the Supreme Lord, from the picture, then what are we? We're, we're living like animals. And even though we may try to be good or whatever, we will never be fulfilled. By adding the spiritual perspective, it becomes what's called dovetailing one's life. You know this term, dovetailing? It, it actually comes from a, a carpentry joint. Like when you join two pieces of wood together and they have like what's a dovetail, somewhat triangular, you know, like the tail of a dove. So you've got a whole bunch of those along one edge of a piece of wood and on the other piece of the wood, it's the negative of that. And then they slot them together. And it's like so tight. It's perfectly tight, you know, and perfectly fitted together. There's no space. So this type of carpentry joint dovetailing. And so the, this English expression, you know, of dovetailing your life with something means like in perfect harmony. So your feeling of dissatisfaction and even their feeling of dissatisfaction which they try to cover up and hide and not pay attention to and they say this is just the way life is and we just got a soldier on, you know what I mean? That kind of mentality. It comes from not living in harmony. Not living in spiritual harmony with, with something bigger and greater and more wonderful. And if one learns this art of living in harmony with my actual self-interest, my spiritual, my, my real self-interest, and in trying to become pleasing to the Supreme Lord and making an offering of my life in this way, then one's life can become spectacularly wonderful, can be a cause of, of a great spiritual awakening. So it's kind of like... The, the same thing, action, has two possibilities. One is it binds one to the world and results in karmic reaction that you must accept the consequence, which just perpetuates material existence lifetime after lifetime. Or that same action now done with a different focus and dovetailed in a different way as a attempt to be pleasing to someone else, something else, the Supreme, means that my actions now become transcendental in nature and instead of binding me to this world, they liberate me. So your struggle is going to be in two things. One is to get your own feet on the ground and, and you know, and grow spiritually and, and, and be, learn to be strong and then learn how to impart that bit by bit to your parents and family in a way that they can understand and appreciate. If they could understand that what you're doing now is that you're building a foundation that's going to direct your life in a, in a purposeful way and you don't have any actual objection to being with them and working with them or anything, but 
you need to get your life organized. You need to have that vision. You need to have that inner strength to really make a commitment to head in a certain direction that's going to be beneficial for yourself and for everyone else to find a way to present that understanding. Most people would be completely okay with that. And they wouldn't see what you're doing as just some phase, some trip that you're going through and then you're going to bail on it, come back and join the team. <laughs> no, you've never left the team. But what you're doing is building a skill set that's actually going to benefit the team. Yeah? Isn't, isn't that what it is, actually, from a spiritual perspective? You're, going to, you're building a skill set and, and a personal understanding and everything that's going to be highly beneficial to the team in many ways, not just through the work, but the time at the end of their life. You'll be able to sit by their bed and guide them through the experience of leaving their body and the whole thing can work out spectacularly well and be very happy and be a wonderful experience. So you're talking about picking, picking up or learning a, 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 an amazing and, and highly valuable skill set that is, a, you know, it's all focused on, on your individual and personal spiritual growth and how you're going to be able to bring that to the table and help others with it. That sound okay or what? Yeah. You're very welcome. So anybody got anything else? We're probably good for one more, I guess. I mean, you know, it, it, it's what, what we're talking about here. It's and, and what your experience has been, you know, you, you spent time on Kauai and stuff and you on the big island and then you've gone off to Maui on your own. And, and it's been a bit of a struggle and everything. It's um, what we're talking about. And when, when I explain some of these things to you, what's the feeling that you have? It's just warm the heart. Yeah, and, 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 and you feel and you know, you know in your heart that what we're talking about is real because you've already had some experience with it. And what we're talking about is now expanding your experience and understanding so that you can be more focused on your growth and development so that you've got more to contribute. You know, spiritual life is not a selfish thing. It's not just about me. Um, it's about what's going to be my contribution to others, to this world in general, but specifically to others. What is going to be my contribution? My contribution is actually going to be incredibly fulfilling for me personally. It's going to be a, a tr it's an important part of my own spiritual growth. But that's not the motivation for it. That's kind of like a side effect. So, you know, you've had this experience where you've got a little bit of stuff on the foundational level and you, you've gone off and wandered around and discovered it ain't that easy. But my encouragement to you is, you know, of course, to be more focused on, on building your foundation and doing things in a really right way and cultivating the, the proper understanding and approach to your life in general and your relationships and dealing with others. And when you hear it, it's kind of like everything just kind of like clicks, right? And you go, okay, yeah, I understand that. I can see that. And you can also see it in other people. The thing is now how to make that real for you. You have to go through that personal growth and that personal experience. You know, the, the association and guidance of other spiritual people that are on, you know, have the same kind of pursuit is important. The association with people that are more spiritually advanced are also important, even if it's from time to time, because what that does is it keeps you, it's like your North Star. It's, it's your guiding light. It keeps you on, on the track. And then as you grow and mature yourself, you know, you, you, this, you're going to fall down, you're going to graze your knees, and you've got to get back up and keep going. You're going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes because of where we've come from and where we're going is so far out. But by the mercy of the Lord within our heart as Chaitya Guru, Krishna, 
and by the mercy of our spiritual master and our spiritual association that we have with others, you know, we will um, learn to, in, we will grow in strength and our stride will become more steady. Our life will become increasingly more purposeful and we will experience ourselves the positive effect and this awakening of tremendous spiritual happiness that comes from the manifestation of actual love for God, spiritual love. Yeah? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't just go like, you know, yeah, let's do it, and just rush out there. And, no, it requires a little, you have to be measured and I tell you, all you have to have is this desire. I, I, I want to become pleasing to the Lord. I want to be of help and benefit to others. And having that desire and cultivating, fanning that desire, we will be um, given all facility. Krishna says, for those who approach me like this in a mood of devotion, I will give the intelligence by with which a person can come unto me. So even this, you know, this awakening and this intelligence, this uh, learning how to navigate and how to, what is the way forward, um, this is part of our spiritual growth and it's a gift. It's not something we invent, we build inside our own head. It's something that just becomes apparent to us. It becomes clear and obvious as we become increasingly um, pleasing to our dearest of friends within our heart of hearts. Okay? We good? That was yeah. worth sitting on the couch or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, ni it's nice because I can see when we talk about it, it's like the, the lights come on. Yeah? And you go from feeling a little sad and, you know, with the struggle and realizing it's not as easy as you thought. It, it's also not as difficult as we might think. We just have to do the right things, we have to adopt the right course of action. Yeah? Hare Krishna. <laughs>